In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up completely automatic recurring tasks in Airtable. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got this to-do list here, and I've got these three different to-dos, swim the English channel, apply sunscreen, and go to a disco party. And then I've got a due date for each of these things, a recur interval, and a recur unit. So if I want to swim the English channel um, every day, that's a Sunday or a Monday. And I've got the due date of 7-10. So 710, which is uh, Monday here. Um, so it's going to tell me the next day when I need to do that. So the next due date it's giving me is the 16th. Let me just check what that is. The 16th is a Sunday. So that makes sense, right? That that would be the next day. And let's say I, I checked it off for 710. Um, that's going to disappear since I've already completed it. And then it creates a new one with the due date of 716. And then also showing, you know, the next due date, which is 717. So then if I were to, you know, complete that one, then it's going to create a new one for 717. And we can do that for days and different days, right? But we could do that for every month, every month on the last weekday and some other options that I will go through in more detail later. So the logic for the system all comes from this incredible channel called Thomas Frank Explains. If you haven't seen Thomas Frank before, I will link the exact recurring tasks video in the description below so you can watch it. Thomas Frank does tutorials on Notion, and so he created a recurring task system in Notion inside of his ultimate brain task management system. And I think the system is really cool and super useful. And so I wanted to recreate it for Airtable. So thanks very much to Thomas Frank Explains for creating the system. I relied heavily on all of the logic in his formulas to create my own formulas. And like I said, I will link to his tutorials in the video description so you can check those out too. So like I said, the logic for these dates is pretty complex. If I open up this uh, next due date formula here, you can see that it's a very long formula. You know, it looks kind of scary, mostly because it's all these different things wrapped into, into one, right? So, you know, we could break it down by recurring by day, month, and then how you do the last weekday, how you do the first weekday. Each of those is a little bit less scary than them all together. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I will provide this when you get the template. You can also get this formula, but we are going to go through the other pieces of the setup because they are really easy and also can be customized by you. And so it's really cool if you know how to do this, it gives you the power to kind of make the system the way you want it to. So in addition to setting up our next due date formula here, we are going to set up a date completed field that's going to show the date that each task was completed by just watching when we check the box. And then we're going to create an automation. This is the super cool thing about Airtable is that the automation is like the easiest part of this that is going to actually create. So when I hit complete on apply sunscreen, it's going to disappear the completed one and, and then show us a new apply sunscreen for the next due date that we had planned it for. And then we're also going to set up some views so that we can see all of the tasks that we've already completed, they didn't get deleted when we completed them. They just got filtered out. And then also we'll set up a view for what was completed in the last week, really ways that we can tailor this and make it more fun and useful to go back and look at this information. If you want to get the template for this so that you can copy it and make it your own, you can follow the link in the video description. It will also take you to my online community where you can actually discuss this project and ask further questions from me, discuss it with other people who are using it, etc. And lastly, if you work for an enterprise business and you want to help your team get the most out of Airtable, I have services that I provide for that and they are also linked in the video description below. With that, let's hop in and actually build this thing. So first, I want to talk about how this recurring system works on a basic level. We've got these different fields here that are set up. There's a completed checkbox field. There is a due date field, right? This is a manual. So this is where we set the initial due date. And then we've got the recur interval. So, you know, is it every one day, one month, um, two months, etc. And then we've got the recur unit. And so the different units that we have available to us are every day, every week, month, year. And then months on the first weekday, meaning it's never going to choose a Saturday or a Sunday, months on the last weekday, same thing. Um, and then just months on the last day, regardless of whether it's a weekday or not. And then in addition to that, if this interval is one and this uh, recur unit is days, those both have to be true, then we can specify 
which days we want to recur on. So that's, you know, say like I work out on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then if I have these set here the way they are, I, I can choose Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, then I can see here if it starts, if the due date is July 17th, meaning the next one should be a Wednesday, the 19th, you can see that that's what it is. And if I were to take away Monday, um, then it's gonna, well, nothing's gonna happen, right? Uh, because it was already Wednesday. So if I take away Wednesday, um, then it's gonna show Friday the 21st. And we can see here, 21st is a Friday. One other really important aspect, and this also comes from Thomas Frank's logic. This is super cool for this first one, Swim the English Channel. Due date is 717. And so the next Friday after that is 721. But if I go back uh, to say July 3rd, um, so in, in that case, you know, the next Friday would have been July 7th, but that's already in the past. So if I click this, it's actually gonna show the 14th. And since I am filming this on the 12th, that makes sense, right? That's the Friday immediately following today. And this works for any of these things. So if I'm going every two months on the last weekday of the month, uh, and right now it's set to uh, November 30th. So this is in the future, right? And then it's gonna pick two months after that. But then if I go into the past here and say uh, May, 2023, let's say May 1st, uh, it's gonna give me September 29th because that is the next, if we took every two months after this date, so be five, seven, nine, um, this is the next one. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna go two months from today because that wouldn't be following our schedule that we've set. It's gonna go two months, then two months, et cetera, from the due date here and find the one, the next one after today. So I probably geeked out way too long on that, but I think this is pretty cool and it's nice to know how it works. Let's move on. The next thing we wanna do is set up our automation, the thing that's actually going to create a new task for that next due date every time we hit the completed button here. So first thing I'm gonna do is actually unfilter this to show all records. It was, it was just showing the uncompleted tasks, right? So I've got all these other tasks here. And what I want to happen is that when I check one of these off here, mark it as complete, the automation is going to create a new version of this task, but it's going to set the due date as the next due date. So we can kind of keep our recurring task going. And this is just so easy in Airtable, like you're gonna, your mind is gonna be blown. So if I go into automations here, first thing I need to do is add a trigger. Actually, the first thing I need to do is name the automation. So let's say create recurring task. And then the trigger is gonna be when I check that box, right? That's when I want this to happen. So I'll click add trigger, and I'm gonna say when record matches conditions. And then the conditions are, I want to look at the tasks table, that's my one table. And then look in the conditions here where complete is checked. So for any record where complete is checked, it's gonna run this automation. Now I want to create my new record. So We'll click this add advanced logic or action button, and then I'm gonna select create record. And I will select the tasks table, right? We're creating a record in the same table. And then, uh, so we're creating a record and now we can choose which fields we're gonna fill out. So the first one, I guess, we'll let's just go in order here. So the name is gonna be the same name, right? So we can click this little plus button here, and then we're pulling from the, the way this works is whenever we're pulling dynamic information, so you know from um, some part of this automation, we need to choose the part where it came from. So it came from when we saw that a record matched that conditions, right? That's that old record that we're looking at. What's the name of that record? And then the next one, which is arguably the most important, is the due date, right? So for the due date, this is the one where we're not gonna be just recreating the last one. Everything else we're copying, the due date, needs to be replaced by that next due date here. So I'm gonna click this little gear and make this dynamic, which then allows me to go in and do the same thing I did for name. And so I'm gonna choose the next due date to put in that due date. Now I can just fill out the rest of the record information. Recur interval. Recur unit. The 
days. And then the last one here, complete, well, we won't fill that out because it's going to default to not complete, which is what we want for this new record. So that is literally it. So if I go ahead and turn this thing on, we can go back to the data here. And then um, let's actually un make all these unchecked, make this a little cleaner. And so for my last record here, let's give it some information. Let's say every two weeks. And then, um, so you can see the, the due date was in the past, so it's going to pick us, you know, the first, the, uh, the first uh, iteration that is after the current date. And then if I check this checkbox here, then it is going to create a new record that is the same one, except that you can see it's got that uh, next due date that matches this. And then the next due is, you know, calculated two weeks after that, eight, nine. So that's the automation. That's really all of the core stuff that we really had to do to make this system work. There's a couple more things that we can do, however, that are really easy lifts that are gonna make this way cooler. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna track when each of these tasks is completed. And in Airtable, we can use something called a last modified field type, which watches either the whole record or a specific field or a couple of specific fields to see when they were modified. And so that's, if I open this up here, um, last modified is showed here. We're actually not gonna use that because I wanna just make this like a little bit smarter than that. Uh, and I'll show you why in a second. So let's call this day completed. And we're gonna make this a formula field type. And so the one problem with using the last modified field type is that if I, for some reason, check something off as complete and then realize that I checked the wrong box and I uncheck it, it's still going to show date completed as, you know, whenever I uncheck the box, because it's just showing when it was either checked or unchecked. And so I just want to add a little bit of logic so that it makes sure that there is no date in a record that is not complete. So we're going to say if complete we can find our complete field equals, and since the checkbox is a true false field, basically, right? It's either checked or it's not checked. Checked or true is actually in, in Airtable's language is a one. So it's either, uh, if it's checked, it's a one, if it's unchecked, it's a zero. So what we're going to say here is if complete equals one, meaning it's checked, then we want to look at the last modified time. And so it's nice that there's a field for this, but there's also a function for this. We can just use the function. And then within that function, we can actually say complete, which means that it's just going to watch this one field and see when that was last modified. And then the way that an if function works is it says, if you got this logical comparison here, then the value of true and then you would enter the value if false if you wanted to, but we can actually just close this off without giving it a value if false because um, it's just gonna leave it blank, which is what we want. So the last thing I'm gonna do before creating the field is go into the formatting here and uncheck this include time box. So we could know exactly what time the task was completed, but I don't wanna know that for mine. So I'm gonna leave that untoggled, create field. And now we can see for the one thing that we have checked here, it shows uh, July 12th, but if I were to uncheck it, then this goes away. So that just makes it a little nicer. And uh, now that we've got this date completed field, however, now we can set up some cool views. And so the next thing I wanna do is to have a view that just shows all of my uncompleted tasks. And then I can set up views that show the completed tasks and maybe actually groups them by that date completed. So to do that in Airtable, I can go to this filter button here and then uh, say where complete is unchecked, right? And now it's going to only show me things where complete is unchecked. And so when I check off this box that I want to swim the English channel, it's going to do two things, right? It's going to, that's going to disappear now. 
and then it's going to create a new one because our automation is working to create that new one. Uh, but the old one disappeared, right? It's not gone. It's just not in this view. So if I then, and let's, let's call this, um, to do since these are things that aren't done yet. Um, and now if we want to see that completed task, I can go ahead and create a new grid view here, call this completed. And then for this one, we are going to filter where complete is checked. Now we can see just our, our one, one item here. So if I go back here and complete a few more of these, it's going to create new ones and then I can go in here and I can see all these completed tasks. And another thing that I could do even is I could group it by the date completed. And since they're all completed today, uh, they're all going to be grouped in one spot, but over time, obviously you're going to have different days. And this is a really nice way to actually like see what you got done over one day. And you know, it might be nice to say to see what we got done over a week. So let's do, let's make one more view. And that view is going to be all the completed tasks in the past week. So we'll create this one completed in the past week. And then for this one, we can use a filter uh, where it says where complete is checked and where date completed is within the past week. And actually, because date completed only shows when it's completed, I don't even need this first one. I could actually get rid of this. And that is our system. We could also open up each of these tasks in a window like this. So if you're not familiar with Airtable, this is kind of a nice page view that's more similar to in Notion when you open up a page, although it is just the data. And that brings up a, kind of a big point that I'll make about the differences between Airtable and Notion. So if this was your first experience with Airtable, you're probably getting a feel of kind of how it's different. But uh, if I were to, you know, give it a one sentence description of how these things differ, Airtable is like if you took just Notion databases and made that really good, like everything works better than it does in Notion databases. You're not making pages though, right? It's just that data layer. But then on top of that, add super robust automation and even interfaces. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content about either Notion or Airtable, check out these tutorial videos. And don't forget to check out the community where you can download a template for this video and also ask me questions, get responses, talk with other people who are using it. So I'll see you there and thanks so much for watching.